Welcome to I Finally Get It. This week, we have Andrew Treg, founder and advisor at Treg Financial. Joining us in studio, as always, Dustin Webb, our producer. I'm your host, Jeff Martin. Let's get it. I spent the better part of the last 11 and a half years in my practice in Treg Financial talking about people's financial plans and talking through what's most important to them from a financial standpoint, from an emotional standpoint. And I've picked up a few different things along the way that I felt were worth sharing uh, that I think that you and maybe some of your listeners might find at, at least a bit interesting and maybe on the more positive side, encouraging or helpful. Oh, yeah. Let's hear the your biggest discovery. So 11 and a half years, and you look a lot younger than, than you are, but you've been at this game for, you know, about 12 years or so. Sure. And what's your biggest discovery? I think my biggest discovery as it relates to the financial planning world is that there are a ton of professionals who call themselves a financial planner, and rightfully so because they do some element of financial planning. But in over 7,000 meetings, I've actually laid eyes on less than five written financial plans. Yeah. from other companies or yeah. other advisors. That is crazy. I think a large part of this comes from that the financial planning industry was born largely out of investment managers and insurance producers. And they're not wrong for calling themselves some level of financial planners because you know your risk-based producers help with planning for the risk-based needs and your investment managers help with potentially managing assets or maybe even distributing dollars over time. A lot of the companies and a lot of the organizations out there went to work and created software, mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm. that they referenced as financial plans to largely, yes, help their clients, but to solve a specific problem. Correct. An investment management problem, an insurance-based problem. The good ones might even talk about balance sheet or a, or a debt problem or a or an accumulation objective. Maybe they want to send their kids to college, whatever it might have you, right? They were plans, but they were largely sales aids for the product that that specific company was aiming to, to, was to push. push. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what brought them to the dance. And so lead with this. Absolutely. And listen, yep. the companies invested millions of dollars in creating these 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 software elements, right? It was recently that that my business partner, Thomas, and I took a step back and we said, we love helping people with risk-based needs and investment needs and financial planning needs, but we really love talking to people about what they're passionate about, not too dissimilar what, what I'm sure drove you to do this That's right. here today. That's exactly right. We wanted a model that we could spend our time talking about what our clients wanted to talk about and not what we wanted to talk about while still taking adequate care of our clients. Yep. Turns out when you have a model that allows you to do that, that allows us as advisors to hear that Andrew and Thomas, we really want to make sure that our kids aren't fighting over our property. Yeah, when it's yeah. all said and done. Yeah. Andrew and Thomas, we really want to be taken care of in the event of illness, late in life, and we don't want our family to be burdened with the financial or logistical implications of that. Andrew and Thomas, we come from separated families and our kids are not each other's. Where do we go? I'm not an attorney, right? But mm. we can introduce you to the attorney that can help actually draft an estate plan. But where's that in the insurance sales world or where's that in the investment expense ratio? That doesn't exist. I haven't found it. If anyone listening can find it, please send it to me, yeah, you know? Yeah. And the reaction has been wild. So, so let, let me let me ask if what I'm hearing is correct. Do you look more holistically and and you want to develop a plan that has possibly components of each or some of those whatever is based on what they want, then you fill it with what you feel like they need? You're not terribly far off. So a lot of our practice, you know, our practice now, we work mainly with advanced practice providers. Okay, so these are nurse practitioners, CRNAs, physician's assistants, right? You look at the the general problems that exist in that space, and you just don't hear things in there that you might hear in other spaces. Like, hey, guys, we make great income, but really our student loans are driving us nuts. <laughs> but no financial advisor on old models, outdated models, gets paid to help educate you about which student loan repayment plan would be most appropriate, not just for your financial objectives today, but yeah, for 15 yeah. and 25 years from now. Correct. There's plans that exist that force taxable events later in life. 
Yep. Hey, so look. Uh... Oh, I get it. I finally get it. Here at Company Growth Academy, we've begun teaching 20-minute growth strategies. They're free, they're fast, and they're full of information to help you grow your company. For more information and to sign up for our advanced notification list, just go to 20togrow.com, 20togrow.com. Let's get it. What I heard is you you niche. You you have a very specific niche or market that you've, how'd you get there? Because that's what people need to to hear. The truth of the matter is that when you're a 19 year old starting in the financial advising industry, yeah. you have to acquire a clientele. And when I looked around me, particularly at the university here in Lafayette, there were really two types of individuals, broadly speaking, who were making an income that could be planned with. Right. Yeah. And it was largely the nurses and the engineers coming out of UL. And so we started working with this. And for whatever reason, we we just clicked really well working with the nurses. In fact, my wife is a nurse. OK. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so as we worked with a lot of those almost I won't say accidentally, I'll say organically, a lot of our favorite nursing clients went back to school and became NPs or some level advanced practice Correct. provider. We asked the person in charge of the consortium for all of Louisiana, how much financial education advanced practice nurses get before they leave their walls. Is it goose egg? It was zero. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. actually zero. Oh, Ask any God. medical school in the country Correct. How many financial presentations they'll have before their residents start? Same. And it's and well, no, no, no. They'll 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 get those those guys will start courting them, right? The the advisor they we hear that all the time in our world. Go buy them lunch and 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 be up front. And that's a great model, and that's fine. They're building relationships. That's fine. Yeah. But man, I don't know if you know this newsflash to anybody who doesn't. There's a lot of people in the medical space who do really well for themselves and their families and need financial planning that aren't physicians. Yeah. Correct. And so as we looked at it, we could only find two others across the nation in two other financial practices across the nation who deal in this space. And we said, okay, why not us? That's fine. We love working. We're already working with these people. And the further we dug and dug and dug and a few hundred meetings later, you wake up and you realize nobody's trying to do this. And, yeah, and yeah. I have a passion for it. So why not us? I love it. And it's so smart. So you matched both your, your passion and the relationships you made at UL with the the service that you could provide and you found a really nice niche. Absolutely. It's, it's really yeah. kind of amazing that, that more people don't listen to you and me, right? And, and, and go, look, I have to niche and then niche again and then niche till it hurts. Then you're everything to that person. So I think good business is is a story of courage. And the reason that I find that most advisors or even even other business owners don't want to forego something to chase something else is out of fear that they will not have enough. Yeah. When uh, you and I know that that is that go. is just false. Right? Yeah. Good business is a story of courage. That's huge. Yeah. So you, you have to say no to be able to say yes to the things you want or that you're passionate about. Maybe they're more profitable. And that is across the board. It doesn't matter what business you're in. Absolutely. That is great. That is great. Did you make that up? <laughs> no. I'll, I may steal that from yeah, you. No, no. Or, well, I don't well, know. So, I, you know, my, my partner and I were talking before I came over here and, and we always, we joke with each other when we're, when we're not sure if something's going to work or should we, should we, you know, proceed with that idea. And we remind each other constantly, we do not act out of fear and we do not Amen. encourage our clients to act out of fear. We act out of courage as long as the heart is in the right spot. Right. Like that's why so much of our world is just trying to figure out how to say, I love you professionally. Right. Like how do you, how I do you do that? Love it. And, uh, and so that's where that came from. That is so good. So, so I guess you got a finance degree. What, what drove you to even look for an internship in in the financial space? I always had this idea because I grew up here in town, and my mom owns a business here in town. I thought for sure I would have some connection, and I wouldn't have to maybe take more of a corporate interview type, I guess, experience to get get my position. Well, in actuality, I had a man who was uh, in charge of our youth ministry program while I was in high school at St. Thomas More here in, in Lafayette. John Listy was quickly promoted within Northwestern Mutual to take care of the college unit 
program got it, got it. and he recruited me from there. I love yeah. that. And what a stellar human being. Oh my goodness. A plus. <laughs> a yeah. plus. You're a right. plus. Yeah. You're right. You, you would say he was one of your mentors. Absolutely. One of the people. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah. he, he recruited me. And what I loved about John was I knew, I knew John's heart from the get go. So there was never yeah. any question about, is this, is this person interested in doing what's right for the clients? Yeah. And so because of that, I really got to pay attention to the other aspects of the business. I knew his heart was in the right place. So now I can watch him wrestle and teach me how to wrestle with how do we acquire clients? How do we professionally, how do we professionally and lovingly tell somebody that what they're doing will not get them to where they're trying to go mm-hmm. or that you know, maybe what they're doing isn't actually in line with what they tell us is most important to them. Those are hard conversations. Yeah. So tell me about some of those. Like what, what's without telling anybody's yeah, names. Sure. Give me an example of how that goes. I'll give you just a, a, a maybe a, a hypothetical. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, a person may approach us and say, you know, it is wildly important to me that my kids have an opportunity to go to private school. And then when we really dig into the financial plan, and, and maybe at that point their, their kids aren't old enough to go to school yet, or maybe they're not in private school at the moment. And so we're looking into cash flow, and we see that maybe the behaviors of that person are not are not allowing that. You know, you say, well, I don't have the budget. Well, it's like, okay, well, where where's the money going? Are you earning an income? Yes. You okay, where, where, where's the where's the money going? Yeah, right. Yeah. And it's not going to bad places, by the way. Mind you, it might just be going to something like their 401k, which as a financial advisor, we would say that's a great spot for those dollars to go. But wait, that's not what we do. Yeah, we are not correct. in the business of just gathering assets. We are not just in the business of placing a product. So we have to have the wherewithal to say, hey, we, we might need to calm down from those 20% contribution rates to the 401k. And that's where the money to send your kids to school is going to come from. I love it. That's a hard thing to say. Yeah, but y- you, you're you obligated to. You it's know, the it, right thing. If you have the information and it's, it's the, the right, right thing. thing. Absolutely. Right. I love that. Absolutely. How much time do you work with clients? I'm sure there's an onboarding process and you have some questionnaires. Sure. But how much how much of it is education and how much of it is just building the relationship and making sure that you're right about what they say they want? What our process kind of looks like now is we'll we'll normally have some level of introductory call, right? And mm-hmm. that's going to be five to 10 minutes, sometimes they they go to 30 of us just really sharing our story and hearing the person's story. Because at the beginning is you got to make sure there's a value alignment, right? Are we oriented towards the same things? And that doesn't mean that they don't need a financial planner, but it just may mean that that's not the right fit for us. And so we would direct those people to whoever they may be the right fit for. After that, we'll spend an hour to an hour and a half doing a deep dive into everything going on in their financial plan. And it's at that point that we'll be able to determine if our fee is worth the client paying us to do our job. Okay. So that's another huge light bulb moment for us in our industry is that there would be a fee attached to our service because for so long, it's a percentage of assets managed or commission-based thing. And it's not that those things are bad. I ask my nurse practitioner clients all the time, hey, would you take a position in which you would only get paid if your patients filled and took their prescriptions. Yeah, yeah. Not one of them has told me yes. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't know that they would want me to operate in the same way as well. And so by by us implementing a fee, it's given them the space to say, I'm paying for this advice. And then we're, to your point earlier, when you said you're obligated to do that, no, we're legally required to do that. Sure. You know, yeah. we're beyond obligated to do that. and And we don't feel any kind of, you know, that does, if it's we don't not, get a sale, that, that, that doesn't matter. It, you paid us to tell you what, what we know. You'd be impressed at the scope. I mean, from, from like recommending some debt strategies, it might be home equity lines of credit. So we're introducing them to the banker. It might be that the estate plan's never been messed with. So we introduced them to the, the estate planning attorney. It might be the, I mentioned the student loan things earlier. It might be some creative tax planning on their retirement account, whatever it might be, but we want to make sure that the fee is justified and in their best interest and that we're going to earn that back for them fairly quickly before we ask them to pay it. So that's, yeah. so we're going to spend probably anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours on the front end. And then we're going to spend some back office hours between me, my associate planner, yeah. our director of operations to make sure again, before somebody would pay us that it's going to be well worth their money. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then I'm sure you meet with them regularly and do yeah, checkups. Absolutely. And absolutely. So help them. What would it. you call, I may know this answer, but what would you call a great, what are the components of a great financial plan 
or is everyone's different and it's just customizable? I always try to answer the question behind the question, Mm -hmm. right? And when I hear that question, I would argue that the first, you know, I can't tell you or Dustin what their perfect financial plan looks like, but if it doesn't exist, I can tell you it's not done. I can tell you that an accumulation of products is unfortunately not a financial plan. A financial plan, Co- correct. I guess my, my question back to anybody who might ask me that is, is if you could share your well thought out objectives with me and share your written plan to get there and where you're at in that plan, that's a damn good plan. Yeah, no doubt about it. And if you can't, uh, me adding a retirement distribution plan to it does not mean that I actually helped it. Yeah, correct. Which is a hard oh, thing man, for somebody in the investment good. space to say, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the truth, you know? Yeah, that is a big deal. Very, very good. Mm-hmm. So where's the road on your entrepreneurial journey? Where, where, What's happening next? Yeah, we're excited. Okay, so uh, like I said, we've been able, and we've Googled, I don't know, a thousand, fifteen hundred times. We're trying to find... Our counterparts, our competition, and yeah, we yeah. can't. That I mean, is we a can't. Blessing. It's, it's not. Yeah, it's not that. It's not that financial advisors don't help advanced practice providers. It's that very few have made it their goal in life, in existence, to help this specific group of people. In my world, and I think about this all the time, when I'm reaching out to advanced practice providers, it feels as if though I have a very small token, a very small gift for them. Just imagine I had $200. Okay. And I had $200 cash and I was trying to give it to them. Can you imagine if somebody called you and said, I have $200 cash. I'd like to give it to you. Um, can I discuss with you a plan to get that $200? You're hanging up the phone immediately, right? <laughs> it sounds you like would, a you, you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't believe it, but that's how we feel. It's like, Hey, everyone, every one of the hundreds that we've talked to. Yeah has said this that our conversation was at the very least helpful or educational. Yeah, correct, nobody correct. has ever, and we've asked, hey, was this helpful? You know, Nobody has ever gotten to the end of that conversation and said, well, this was a waste of time, or I've heard all of this before. And so it's just, for us right now, it's just really about getting in front of more of them and making a statement. So we've observed, we spent a lot of time over the last 11, 12 years observing Right. And now we're excited to go actually make the impact to, Very good. to, to Very good. make a change, you know? Yeah. And and you're starting by beyond things like podcast or whatever. But I guess what what's the uh, what's your strategy uh, unless you're still developing? It? Yeah. So, uh, you know, we did uh, <laughs> we, we like their association. Right. So they have they yeah. have professional associations. And so we've done a, a <laughs> I'll share a quick story from one we did here in Lafayette not too long ago. We had a very short presentation. I mean, it was two or three slides. Here we are. Here's what we do. And we prepared 20 questions that were often asked in this space just about mm, different pl- planning topics. And so we went through and then short, surely, you know, slowly but surely the hands started popping up. What about this? What about that? So we had some good feedback there. And then at the end, one of the facilitators of the event, actually, and she was super helpful. She's, she's awesome. She raised, she's like, hey, I know Northwestern has some incredible blank products. You want to talk about those for a second? And I was like, no, no, that that actually, that's, I, I, and I, you know, I wasn't going to say it up there, but that is the problem is that you have a lot of great companies with exceptional products or strategies, but but those that is not a financial plan. And that is that solves a problem in some financial plans. But if but if we all go around, we as financial advisors across the country, if we all go around with our best product idea, we won't help. What you just said is what so many people need to digest is I can sell you a product and we can talk about benefits. We can talk about, you know, all everything around the features and things like that. We're in business today because we solve problems and you have identified the problems that your providers have and you solve those problems in in the best way possible. you're, You're creating a plan based upon your passions, your goals and your dreams, and you are Plugging in products here and there. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. But, when appropriate. But you're there to talk about solutions to problems, not products and features and benefits. Absolutely. Very, very good. Very in fact, good. In fact, the best advisors probably don't spend any... I, I think about this all the time. They probably don't spend any time. Why should I utilize 
you know, former guest Paul George in my leadership execution strategy. Yeah. Because he's an amazing person <laughs> and he will bring that to your 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 team. Yeah. The end. You yeah. know? Yeah. Whether Paul utilizes system A or system B, I trust Paul to take care of that for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's just absolutely. I think and you mentioned it earlier, I think it's hilarious how many people have said you know, well, financial plans, well, I have benefits. That's like <laughs> objectives. Well, I have tools, you know, <laughs> like that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't great that you have benefits. Let's leverage them in your plan. Where's the plan? Well, I've 7,000 meetings. I've seen four of them. Where are they? <laughs> you yeah, know, like I just yeah. I can't find them. That's amazing. For a young guy, you do some recruiting. Uh, yeah. yeah. And so for a young guy coming out of college, a young lady coming out of college, what's a good tip you would give them to enter into a, the, the world of either financial services or investments or, or planning? There's a million ways to get into our industry, right? Every yeah. model is slightly different, mm-hmm. but I would give them the same advice I would give to any other industry. When you're in front of a center of influence, whether that be a manager, a recruiter or whatever, Find a way to be valuable to them and expect nothing in return. That's that's great. And when you do that, nobody forgets that because that's that's saying I love you professionally. Absolutely. Right. You may encounter a recruiter for a company that you're not interested in joining, but you may have a person that 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 may fit really well and make that connection and just say, I'm so glad you guys were able to meet and expect nothing in return. And I just, we firmly believe if you put enough good out there, there is no way that you don't receive it tenfold. Well, this is a perfect segue to my last question, which is, as you encounter people, uh, how do you try to leave them different and better than before you met them? Probably the most, you know, in our outreach and whatnot, it very rarely is the first time we speak with somebody, maybe over the phone or maybe shaking their hand at a a meeting. It very rarely is that going to immediately become a client Treg financial relationship. And it's the small things. I mean, it's your tone. It's your truth. Truthfully, it's your optimism. I spend an absorbent amount of money at Starbucks near my office and I have cold brews in my fridge at the office. And I've told my wife and I've told my business partner, I'll tell everybody when I walk into the Starbucks next to my office, they say, good morning, Andrew. Hope yeah. you have a great day. Yeah. We like to pass those off as maybe being polite or maybe being whatever, but my day is, you, you know, whatever, substantially better because every day th- there's like five, six, seven employees. I'm going to write them all a thank you card and give them a Christmas gift. I mean, just every day it's a smile. And, and so I would say, you know, translating that into our, our small reactions and our small interactions with people before they maybe become somebody that's more important in our lives is that's free. That's free of charge. And so you got to give them that energy. You got to wake up. You got to, you got to provide energy because that is, that costs no money and that benefits everybody. Thanks for tuning in to I Finally Get It. For more information on Andrew and what he's got going on, visit our show notes. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Hey, at Company Growth Academy, we've started doing 20-minute trainings. These are 20-minute growth strategies that we put out every month. To get on the advanced notification list, just visit 20togrow.com, 20togrow.com. If you have a light bulb moment that would help another entrepreneur, please reach out to me at jeff at ifinallygetit.com.